Let's solve a question on surface energy and one on surface tension. For the first one, we have a spherical raindrop of radius r, which breaks into 27 smaller droplets of the same size. So all of these droplets, 27 of them, they're of the same size. How much work is done on the large raindrop by the external environment? And S is the surface tension of water. Okay, as always, pause the video and first attempt this question on your own. Okay, hopefully you have, you have given this a shot. Now let's see what the question is asking us. It is asking us how much work is done on the large raindrop, on this raindrop, by the external environment. Okay, let's make sense of that. So the external environment might be applying all of this force on this on this large raindrop. And because of that, this drop might have, it might have changed into smaller droplets, the ones that you see, 27 of them. When the droplet was large, like this, there was some surface energy associated with it, right? And similarly, when the droplets are small, even then there will be some surface energy associated with it. But if we if we think about the work that is being done on the large raindrop by the external environment, that can lead to change in some surface energy. In fact, we can use the work energy principle and say that work done is equal to change in energy. Now, in this case, we can assume that there is no friction as such. So whatever the work that is being done on the large raindrop, that is not leading to any increase in thermal energy or there is no friction. So all the work that is being done on the large raindrop is purely leading to change in the surface energy of the raindrops. So there is some surface energy associated initially. There is some surface energy associated finally. This is EF and this is EI. And the change in the surface energy can be written as EF minus EI. Now we can think back to what was this surface energy. Well, we defined surface tension. There was one way of defining surface tension as force per unit length, right? F by L. But there's, there's one more way of defining surface tension, which is energy, surface energy per unit area, E by A. So E, E over here is nothing but S into A s into a and we can write it in this manner because we see that in options there is there is this variable of s so it's okay if we include s in our equation now let's think about the area let's see how the area is changing well one thing when this raindrop was broken into 27 smaller raindrops we can be sure that one thing that is not really changing is the volume right there is no amount of water being lost anywhere this big raindrop is just changed to smaller raindrops so the initial volume and we can write that as 4 by 3 pi r cube this is equal to the final volume and final volume is 27 multiplied by the volume of one small raindrop so small r cube let's work this out so this just gets cancelled off and we get when we remove the cubes we get r equal to three small r so this is how the radius of the large raindrop is related with the radius of a smaller raindrop okay so now if we if we if we plug in if we plug in this this value of energy surface energy over here the final the final surface energy really is surface tension into the final area final surface area minus surface tension into the initial initial surface area and we are, we are taking s because even a surface tension is not really changing right it's water to begin with water that ends with and surface tension is just a property of a liquid it, it's just like density so it won't it changes from liquid to liquid but it's constant because we are only dealing with water a spherical raindrop so water in this case so s remains the same final and initial now over here we can take s common and final area we have 27 raindrops so 27 into 4 pi r square that is the surface area of a sphere 4 pi r square so 4 pi and let's write r by 3 in place of small r we can take 3 to the left hand side this becomes r by 3 so in place of small r we write r square divided by 9 and we are subtracting 4 pi 4 pi there's no space left big r square that is the initial area this is 4 okay so 9 this goes by 3 and 3 into 4 is 12 so this becomes let's write it let's write it over here work is equal to 3 into 4 12 so s 12 pi r square minus 4 pi r square and this is when you work this out this is 8 pi r square s that is option c 
All right, let's look at one more question and this one will be on surface tension. All right, here we have a U-shaped frame which has a 12 centimeter long sliding wire on the open side. So we can see that on the diagram, this is supposed to be 12. So let me change that. It's dipped in a soap solution and placed horizontally. An unstretched spring with a spring constant of 0 0.4. So let's write that this is 0 0.40 Newton meters has one end tied to a wall and the other end is attached to the sliding wire. It's observed that the wires slide to the left. This long sliding wire is going to the left, stretching the spring by two centimeters before coming to a stop. What is the surface tension of this soap solution? All right, now when we look at the situation, when we see that the sliding wire is being, it's sliding to the left, we can ask ourselves why? Well, this is a soap solution and it will have, it will have a surface tension. Now, what was surface tension to begin with? We can say that surface tension is a property of any liquid that wants to minimize, wants to minimize its surface area. So surface tension is a property of any liquid that wants to minimize its surface area. And this wire that is sliding to the left then makes sense because now the surface area, there was this initial surface area and now this final surface area is slightly less, right? It's not as much as it was initially. The wire has moved to the left. And the only reason that the wire will move to the left is that there must be some force, right? There must be some force that is acting on the wire. So let's try to draw the free body diagram for a wire over here. Now there must be some force that is acting to the left, but we know that there is a spring attached to the right. So there is a force which is acting to the right as well. This force is the force due to the spring. Now in the question, in the question, it says that the wire moves two centimeter before coming to a stop. So when it has moved two centimeters, it has stopped. And the only reason that an object that is in motion, if it stops from the Newton, from Newton's second law, we can say that the forces on it are balanced, right? The forces on it must be balanced. So when it has moved two centimeters, then this force due to, due to the soap solution, this should be equal to the force due to the spring. This is from, from Newton's laws. We already know what the force due to a spring is. It's K into X and X over here is two centimeters. That is the extension of the spring and also the distance moved by this wire. But what is the force that the soap solution is exerting on this wire? Well, to figure that out, we can go back to what surface tension was. Surface tension, mathematically, we define it as the force per unit length, force, force per unit length. And in this case, this force right here, we can say, we can say this is S into L, right? If we assume that S is the surface tension of this soap solution and L is the length of this wire. So in place of F, we can write, we can write S into L and we can equate it. But the story isn't complete right now. Turns out for a soap solution, we take two interfaces. There is a surface on the top, there is a surface at the back. If we try to see how it looks like, we can have a look at this image right here. There's a, there's a top surface, maybe the one that we see, and there's a surface behind at the bottom and in between you have all the water in, in bulk, you have, you have the water. So when it comes to soap solutions, we consider two surfaces. So there's a force acting on the wire at the top surface at surface one, and there's a force acting on the wire at the bottom surface at, at the interface two at the surface two. So it turns out, therefore we multiply this with two, we add a two over here because the force acts at surface one and one more force acts at surface two. So this is two SL. And now when you work this out, we need to figure out, we need to figure out the surface tension. So let's keep S on one side. When we do that, this becomes equal to KX, KX divided by, divided by two L. Now I think we do know everything. We know what length is 12 centimeters. We know X, this is two centimeters. We also know K, that is 0 0.4 Newton meters. So pause the video, work out, work out the calculation on your own and then, and then hit play. All right. This will come out to be equal to, this will come out to be equal to 0 0.03 Newton per meters. That is the surface tension of this soap solution. Okay. You can try more questions from this exercise in the lesson. And if you're watching on YouTube, do check out the exercise link, which is added in the description.